plan on staying with us long, Mr. Cartwright? Nope. Leaving soon, I take it. Mm-hmm. Tin Bucket's a nice town. Said Tin Bucket's a nice town. Yes, I heard you. How do you like River Bend? Oh, River Bend's a nice town. Mm, that smells good. And you took some cattle up there. Mm. Hundred head, a lot of cattle. Just mm. you and the boys? Yep. You're a long way from the Ponderosa. What you doing in Tin Bucket? Going back to the Ponderosa. I'll raise. Five. Hombre, que pasa? I'm bluffing. This I do not believe. Well, I guess that just leaves the two of us. Yeah? <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Parker. Compliment. Yeah, you are. Keep the change. Thank you. Yes, it sure is a pleasure and a privilege doing business with the Cartwrights. Well, heard a lot about you. Oh. Just sorry to hear about you falling on hard times. Hard times? Would you hear that? Oh, uh, here and there, just sort of uh, running about. Well, things couldn't be better, Mr. Tingle. There's horse. What's he talking about? I don't know. Hey, horse! Oh! There you are. He got here, good. Yeah. I know, man. Well, you sure, sure look smell good. <laughs> Sorry, I can't say the same about you. Well, all day on the trail with a wagon load of hides, what do you expect? Well, did you have any trouble getting those hides together? Listen, boy, what kind of deal do you make on them hides in a place like this, the last minute like this? Oh, some of the hides were a fellow by the name of Amos Parker. He telegraphed us while we were still on River Bend, said he was willing to pay top dollar for the hides if we could deliver them here. So I telegraphed you. You know this Parker was from someplace? Yeah, I did some business with him about, oh, nine, ten years ago. Some of you had a cat, nothing important. We just fixing to meet him now. Come along. No, I think I'll get a bath and shave. I'll That's see you later. That's a good idea. I'll <laughs> yeah. oh, see you in the saloon. All right. Take your time. I'll see. And raise you 20. Mm -hmm. All right. I'll call you. Kind of reckless once you race, with the luck I've been having. Hold it right there. I want to make sure you got a right to that money before I give it to you. Somebody look in his pockets. What's he got in his pockets that you're so worried about? Well, why don't you look and see? Put it away. All right, son, stand up. Those are not my cards. I don't know where they came from. That is your pocket, ain't it? You're working this deck. These two here and three you got in your hand, I count five kings. They're not my cards. Mr. Conrad, they say I've been cheating. No. These are not my cards. I don't know where the cards came from, Mr. Cartwright. I'm afraid the sheriff found them in his pocket. My name is Parker, Mr. Cartwright. Yes. Oh. 
Oh, we have some business to discuss. Yes, we do. Just as soon as I attend to this. Mr. Cartwright, I don't know how the cards got in my pocket. Do you know this man? Yes, he works for me. A card sharp works for you? Not a card sharp. He's a cow and a very good one. <laughs> well, it's a cinch you ain't a very good card sharp. If I hadn't have been here, he'd have probably got himself shot. I'll have to give these men the money that's here on the table. No! Easy, Candy. I've got $25 in this game. Go on, divide it up, fellas. Get your money. Well, I'm the biggest loser. $59. My money is easy to find. I got it water soaked swimming my horse across the river. Hard earned, too. Hate to lose it to a card shop. I appreciate what you've done, Mr. Cartwright. I'd like to thank you. Thank you, too, Sheriff. I'd be more careful who I played cards with in the future. Well, I... I ought to throw you in jail. Sheriff, uh, I'll be responsible for him. Well, get him out of town. Well, we'll all be leaving just as soon as I complete my business, if that's all right. All right. Joe Wright heard on Candy, will you? Candy, I'll be up in a Buy a drink? Oh, uh... no, 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 thank you. We can just sit down and get our business out of the way. Well, how do you guys been treating? Can't complain. No, you've been very successful. How about yourself? <laughs> well, uh, had my uh, ups and downs. I guess more downs than ups, but you know, all in all, uh, done pretty well. Good. How's Mrs. Parker? Alice? <laughs> you remember her? <laughs> well, how is she? She's uh. Bill. Well, she's dead, Mr. Cartwright. What happened about a year ago? Fell from her horse and... I'm sorry. Well, uh, misfortune happens to all of us, I guess. Yes. Yes, I've had my share. Yes, so I hear. I understand that you had... A lot of hard luck lately. What do you mean? Well, the business, uh, debts, um, something about your credit wasn't... Uh... Who told you that? I don't know exactly. I mean, it's just common knowledge. Right? <laughs> it sure is common knowledge. Even the barber mentioned it. Well, isn't it true? Of course not. Look, my son Horse has brought in a wagon load of hides, and there'll be two more wagons on their way. Oh, fine, fine, because... I want to discuss price with you. Well, you quoted the price in the wire you sent me. Yes, and, and I know I did, but some things have happened, and I, I can't uh, come up with the money that I quoted to you on the wire. I can really only pay half now. Well, maybe you'd like an hour or so to think about it. No, I, uh, I don't need any more time to think about it. I, I've probably taken up too much of your time as it is. I think I'll be on my way. So we can't do business? Yes, I, I am too. Good day, Mr. Parker. I don't care about the money. What's killing me is you believe them and not me. The sheriff believed them. It's a two-bit sheriff in a two-bit town. Two-bit sheriff or not. Put us in this gun over here and saw the bars in his jail. He was going to throw you behind them or kill you if you try to fight him. Did you believe me about the cards? You say somebody planted them in your pocket. Yeah, that's right. When? While you were playing? I'm not that stupid. Well, when? I don't know. When I went in, there were a lot of people at the bar. They were shoving a... 
Did you know any of them? No, I didn't know any of them. Doesn't make any sense. Does it? Well, why don't we get the money for the hides and get out of this town? We can't. Parker says he'll only pay half price for those hides. Well, you're not gonna let him get away with it, are you? No, I'm not gonna let him get away with it. Now, if Hoss take those hides back to the Ponderosa and head out the two wagons at Pine Creek, I want you to go with them. Right. Got my horse over the blacksmith shop, I'll get him. Candy? Let's go see the sheriff. Billy? Sure is hot. We all slow down a little bit. Can't I got all this work to do? Well, a cold sarsaparilla sure would taste good right now. It would for a fact. You buying or am I? <laughs> I'm always broke. Well, I'll tell you what, I'll buy if you'll go get them, huh? Oh, okay. Hey, where's your axle grease? I need to grease the wheel. Inside there on the shelf. Fine, right, thank you. Now, what I'm trying to say is I ain't gonna sit around and let nobody turn this town into a three-ring circus. And nobody's intended to do that. I'm trying to clear my name, Gant. Sheriff Gant. I'm gonna have to do something about that squeak one of these days. I think every man has a right to clear his name, Sheriff. That man of yours can just thank his lucky stars that all I did was take that poker money away from him. Now, he can't stay in town and he can't come back after he leaves. Why don't you just sell them hides and all of you get out of town? I'm not selling my hides. You mean you come all this way up here and you ain't gonna sell? What are you trying to do, hold Parker up on them hides? Parker, cut the price. Parker, I think, is trying to drive a hard bargain himself. Well, maybe he's offering you all them hides is worth. They're top-grade hides. Now, look here, Mr. Cartwright. All of us get pressed to the wall sometime or another, but, well, why don't you just sell them hides and, and go on home? I know that, well, you've been a rich man for a long time, but you got to face it. You're broke. He's not broke. Now, look here, young fella. I've taken all the jaw for you that I'm a-going to. You can just shut your mouth and get out this door. And if either one of you or any of that crew of yours so much as looks sideways the rest of the time that you're in town, I'll throw you in jail so fast it'll make your head swim. Now get out of here. How you doing? Got him ready yet? I did the one shoe. I thought I'd clean him up all around for you. Uh, good enough. Hey, that's a right pretty horse you got there, mister. You interested in selling him? You couldn't afford what this horse is worth. Oh, I thought maybe you'd let him go cheap. Hard up the way you are. And it says I'm hard up. Well, how else are you going to figure it? Your hired hands have to cheat at poker to make a living. <laughs> Go on, get it finished. Virginia City Bank. And you want $5,000 cleared here to our bank? That's right. It's a lot of money to try to borrow by telegraph, Mr. Cartwright. I'm not borrowing the money. The money's mine. I just want to transfer it to the bank here. Would you please send that? What's the matter? The line's gone dead. Try it again. Well, I said it ain't working. There's nothing we can do but wait. Maybe there's something wrong at the other end. You think it was cut at the other end? Why can't be cut at either end? Come on. If the wire's been cut, it's one of you done it. Well, it took you long enough. A couple more minutes and I'd have been on my way. Well, had to go to two saloons to find cold ones. Ah, that's good.
driving a team drunk in a skunk. Here, take a rest of it. <sighs> hey, what are you doing? Just helping him finish his food. He's been hit on the head, Pa. Yes, I know. He's drunk in a skunk. Looks like you went broke in more ways than one, Mr. Cartwright. He wasn't drunk. He wasn't drunk. Clean this mess up. Get them hides back on that wagon and get off the street. Give me a hand with this wagon. I'll pay you. I don't need pay to help a man in need of help. I just heard about what happened. Seems like hard luck is dogging you, doesn't it? Anyway, I'm sorry. Why? Old time's sake, I guess. Look, Mr. Cartwright, I don't like to take advantage of a man, especially when he's down and out. Parker, don't concern yourself about being down and out. I'm not. Whatever you say. Anyway, I'll buy these hides from you for of three quarters of the price we said. That does it, Mr. Cartwright. Thank you, Mr. Daly. What do you say? <sighs> All right. Three quarters of the price we agreed on. All right. I'll write you a check for the full amount on the bank here at the Tin Bucket. If you don't mind, I'll have to verify that account. Of course not. Bank? Just over here. Yes, I know. Mr. Hollis, I'd like to ask you a question. The I... Bank of Tin Bucket is always ready to answer questions, Mr. Cartwright. No, no, thank you, thank you. And your question? Well, uh, Mr. Amos T. Parker has an account in this bank, I understand. Yes, he has. Well, what I'd like to know is, is the account large enough to cover a check in excess of $1,000? Oh, you'll have to bring in the check before I can answer that question. Well, I'd like to know if the check is good before I accept it. Well, well. I suppose it is reasonable that a man in financial difficulties would doubt everyone else. Where'd you hear that? Your financial problems are common gossip. And I'll not give out privileged information concerning our more successful clients. Mr. Cartwright, do you expect me to buy those hides? And what's the matter with the hides? Look at the brand. What about it? Ponderosa brand? We'll turn it over. What do you call that brand? Bar E. Uh, can you prove that that steer was legally yours before the brand was done? Mr. Parker, I've never worked over a brand in my life. Old bail of them was found on your wagon. That's the blacksmith. That's the way of it, Mr. Cartwright. A full bail of them. You believe I'd deal in stolen hides? Well, if you're as broke as they say you are, you just mine. What about that big kid of yours? What about him? Well, what's to prevent him from going into business for himself? Oh, come on. Even if you wasn't broke, I reckon it wouldn't be the first time that some rich man's kid went and stole something just for the pleasure of stealing it. 
Do you believe that? Huh? Well, after what's happened today, you just tell us something we can believe. I'm going to check with the bar E, and if they've had any cattle stolen, you and that boy of yours are going to have to stand trial. If Hoss brought those hides, then he has clear title to them. And if he ain't got clear title to them... Then he didn't bring them. Somebody else put them in the wagon after he got here. Oh, somebody else put them in the wagon. Who'd do something like that? Yeah, give us some answers. Who and why? I don't know who or why, but I'll find out. I left Hoss with candy. Couldn't get a doctor. He's still unconscious. Can you explain those stolen hides, Cartwright? Now, you stay out of it. Yeah, you can shut me up, Sheriff. But you can't hide the fact that Cartwright's been stealing Bar E cattle. What are you talking about? Your father's a thief. that Cartwright started the fight or you'd be paying the damage. You know how much this is going to cost you? No, I don't. But whatever it is, I'll be very happy to pay it. Here. A hundred dollars in here. That should be enough at two of those windows. Here. My money. It's gone. I had it a minute ago, just before the fight started. Hold on, son. Let me see it. It's mine. It's water soap. I know it's yours. It's been a long time since we've had a pickpocket in town. Now look, I didn't take that money. Well, of course you didn't. Well, you saw me find it in his pocket, didn't you? I saw you take it out of his pocket. Well, I reckon it wouldn't be the first time when a man ever started a fight so he could pick somebody's pocket. You can't let him get away with it this time, Sheriff. You got to arrest him. I'm going to. Will you swear out a warrant? You bet your life I will. All right, come on, son. Get going. Seems like you got two boys that you don't know much about, Mr. Cartwright. One of them's a pickpocket, and the other one's a cow thief. You're wrong on both counts. Oh? Well, the evidence says I'm right. How's that make you feel? Well, the evidence and you are both wrong, Sheriff. Sure do take a lot of convincing, don't you? Oh, do you want to bail him out? It'll cost you five hundred dollars. Well, I haven't got five hundred dollars. I didn't think so. With me. Oh, now don't you try leaving town. You do, and I'll come after you with a posse. And that uh, wagon load of hides is impounded. Leave it alone. <laughs> I don't know. I've never seen a man out like this before. You think he's all right? Yeah, he's all right. His pulse is regular. Breathing is, is normal. I don't know what they doped him with. Whatever it is, it's doing a good job. There's no doctor in this town. Can I ask you something? Sure. Do you believe those cards were planted on me in the saloon? I'm sure they were. What makes you so sure? You said they were. That's good enough for me. Thanks. What I keep asking myself is why? Yeah. Why? with the cards planted on you. There was the money planted on little Joe. Why did 
this happen? All part of some kind of plan, isn't it? What are we going to do? I'm going to wait until I can talk to Hoss. I've got to find out whether those hides, those blotched hides, they came with the Ponderosa. You think there's some chance they did? Well, Hoss filled the wagon with some of his own hides. He may have a better sale for them. But more than likely, the hides came from stolen cars and they were switched here in town. But I can't go looking for hours until I talk to Hoss. One thing I can do, though. Start proving I'm not broke. Look, I gotta give you this site draft for five thousand dollars. I want you to take this to the bank of Virginia City. And also this note asking for a letter of credit. I want you to get back with the cash and that letter just as soon as you possibly can. I feel a little funny about leaving you here alone with Hoss like this. I'll manage. You take these and get back as soon as you can. Though. All right, I'll be back before you know. Be getting hungry. Uh, thanks. Need more than food is somebody to listen to sense. Ah, I'm always happy to listen to somebody. Ah. Hey, you're gonna like that stew. That's muskrat stew. I caught him myself. Hmm. Look, Sheriff, I, I am not a pickpocket. There's a man swore out a warrant says you are. Well, the only way that money could have gotten in my pocket was if he put it there, that fellow Rice. Now, what did a feller want to do a thing like that for? Yeah, that's what I'd like to know. Your stew's gonna get cold. Yeah, not, uh, not that hungry, thanks. Well, sure ain't no reason letting it go to waste. You know, an old mountain man taught me how to make this stew. He learned how to fix it from a youth woman. I reckon I'm the only man in the world knows how to cook this stuff now. Look, Sheriff, I don't have to pick pockets. My brother Hoss doesn't have to steal cattle, and our ranch hands don't have to cheat at cards. Is that a fact? Yeah, that's a fact. We happen to be a very prosperous family. You're going to find that out tomorrow. Then how come your old man couldn't raise a measly $500 to bail you out? Well, he'll raise it tomorrow. Don't you worry about that. How do you think you're going to look to the rest of this town when they find out that whole story was just made up about us? Kind of stupid, don't you think? It don't make no difference how much money you got. It's like I said, I reckon you wouldn't be the only rich kid that ever liked to steal. I don't like to steal, and I don't steal. I remember this kid uh, over here by Three Forks. Old man run, uh, run and dubbed you. Nicest little spread you ever saw. Sheriff, if you... Now, now this kid, uh, I think his name was Doby or Dobbs or... Can't remember just exactly what it was. He liked to steal, steal anything and as loose as both ends. Just pack it off of Five cent piece of candy, $50 horse, he had to steal it. I reckon I had him in jail, oh, I don't know how many times. Couldn't cure him. Finally, his old man made him join the cavalry. They sure cured him there. Hey, did you ever think of joining up? Hmm? The cavalry, did you ever think of joining the cavalry? Pay ain't too good, but it sure beats the heck out of being in jail. Well, I'll give it some thought. Why don't you think about this? Just think about all the things that have happened since we've been in this town. Well, that's an awful lot of trouble for one family. Don't you think there's something wrong with that? How's that? I said, don't you think there's something wrong with that? Yeah, I reckon. Uh, maybe it got a little too much salt in it.
What took you so long getting here? Did Billy get out of town? You didn't think he was going to stick around. Horse Cartwright will wake up any time now. When he does, he'll tell his father it was Billy who switched the hides. I'm pulling out. Not now you're not. Not this close to the end. Whose? Cartwright's or mine? The more I see of him, the less I like the whole business. He's not dumb. He doesn't quit. And he just doesn't scare. Sounds to me like you're the one running scared. I don't care what it sounds like to you. I didn't pay you the kind of money I did just to see you walk away. You know how much this means to me. How I've planned it. How hard I've worked. It means nothing to me. Does this mean anything to you? Depends. How much? It'll just about do it. Only if it means the end of Cartwright. You got yourself a deal. Let's go. Where to? Stable. That's the first place Ben Cartwright will go, looking for those hides. You sure? I'm sure. You found him. Get up. I said, get up. I'll throw your gun over here. Very easy. Oh, I'm glad you found your hides. I figured you would. Why did you switch them? For the same reason I had Rice plant those cards on your ranch hand? For the same reason I made your son look like a thief? My other boy like a drunk. That's right. Now I got the whole town thinking you're broke. This is a balancing of the books, Mr. Cartwright. A final accounting. Well, you destroyed my life. Now I'm going to destroy yours. I sold you... So do you, if you had a cattle, years back. Now, how could that destroy your life? You're forgetting one thing, my wife. All the times you met with my wife. My what? That's right. I met your wife once in my life. You invited me to dinner to your place, you invited me yourself. You don't have to lie, I'm not stupid, you know. <laughs> Not lying, it's the truth. I, 
I never saw... What made you... What gave you the idea I ever saw your wife again? It was obvious. Well, how could anything be obvious if it never happened? And how can you believe such a thing? Well, I believed it. I knew. Oh, she was clever, though. She had excuses for everything. All her little trips and all the things she'd bring back. Presents from you. Well, I knew. I knew she was meeting with you. She loved you, Mr. Cartwright. Rich Ben Cartwright. Big and successful Ben Cartwright. My wife is in love with you. No, I never saw your wife after that first time. Now, that's the truth. Oh, she used to deny it, too, for a long time. She said... She didn't want things like money and fine clothes, big house and position. Said she wasn't interested in them. That's not quite the way it was. In fact, it wasn't like that at all. I know because I forced the truth out of her. You know what she said? She said, yes. Yes, I love Ben Cartwright. Is that what you want to hear? I love him, I love him, I love him. Are you satisfied now? Well, those were her very words. Parker, I don't know where you got any of these ideas, but there was never anything between your wife and me. I never saw her after that first time. You forced her into admitting to something that wasn't so. Mm -mm. Now she's dead. Now she's dead. Had an accident. That's right. Fell off a horse. Yeah, hit her head on a rock. Hit her head on a rock. Mm -hmm. Well, could it be that when she finally said all those things that you wanted her to say, that you forced her to say, did you pick up a rock and bash her head in, kill her, kill her for no good reason at all, did you? I had a reason, a good reason, and she couldn't lie out of it, and neither will you. I'm going to hang you, Mr. Cartwright. Now, a rock was good enough for her. For you. Rope. This was the card, right? Don't shoot him! We have to hang him! I don't want him tied. I'll cut him loose once he's swinging. You should have had me in here instead of waiting outside. That's all right, Pete. Failure, remember? And what's worse, you've discovered that your sons are rotten. Well, one's a pickpocket, other a cattle thief. The good people at Tin Bucket already believe that you're broke and in debt, got no credit. They believe your sons are rotten. And you couldn't stand the disgrace, and so you hanged yourself. And the word will travel, and for years to come, you're going to be known as a broken and a disgraced man. Suicide. <laughs>
That littlest kid of yours. I was helping him eat his supper a little bit ago, and he kept a jawing at me. And, and later on, I got to thinking, well, maybe he is right. It did seem like an awful lot to have happen to a family unless somebody was helping it along. So I just got to nosing around and. Uh... Got no fight left in him. It's everything, even the killing his wife. Well, best that way. What about Rice? He ain't gonna be walking around for a while, maybe a year or more. Can't say I'm sorry. Well, I can't say as I blame you. You come on back anytime. You're always welcome. Yeah. here for, huh? Come back here. What are you getting so excited about? My dad blamed Indian. What's his name? Why did you run him off the Ponderosa? Why? What did he do to you? Nothing. Well, it's just that wherever I am, all of a sudden he just appears. I mean, out of nowhere. He's breathing down the back of my neck. He, he points those eyes at me like a double barrel shotgun. It gives me the willy. <laughs> ah! I wonder what the express wagon's heading to the house for. I don't know. Let's get on our horses and find out. I got a package for you. You come from San Francisco today. Boy, will I be glad to get rid of it. Where are we? All right, end of the line. Come on. Let me go. Let me go. Let me go. Hey, hold on. I was supposed to give you this, too. <laughs> hold on now. Well, wait a minute, Dan. What is. Hi, hi, hi. Hey. Whoa, whoa. Hey, hey. He's a girl. I ain't need a girl. I'm a boy. Well, if you just control that boy or, or a girl or whatever, we'll try to find out what this is all about. Dear Mr. Cartwright, the sweet child before you is my daughter and related to you. Although we've never met, we are related, even though distantly. My father was William Cartwright. This is my daughter, Samantha. It ain't neither Samantha. It's Sam. Now, I haven't got time to explain right now, but I just can't keep her with me any longer. I'll get in touch with you as soon as I can. Please, for the love of God, take her in. Take care of her. I can take care of my own self. And whatever you may think, 
I love her. She's all I have to love. Martha Cartwright Dorcas. I ain't gonna stay here. And you better let me go. Oh, you better take her inside. We'll get to the bar place. You can to get back to work. Right, Papa. And then what? And then she just put me on stage and said it was for my own good. But like I told you, she wanted to get rid of me. She hates me. Oh, now, look, Samantha. Yeah, I told you and told you it ain't Samantha, it's Sam. Ow! All right, Sam, now sit down here. All right, just stay put. Why do you want to be a boy? Because before I was born, my father wanted me to be a boy. So that's what I am, a boy. Well, where's your father now? I don't know. He went away last month and never came back. Mommy always scolded him for not having very much money. So he just went away. And then Mommy sent me away. Well, when your father went away, what did your mother do? She got a job in a nice place. And the men in the saloon were good to me. When your mother was working, who was taking care of you? Oh, she hired an old lady to take care of me. But I ran away every chance I got. And I'll run away from here, too. Just see if I don't. Look, look. Samantha. Sam, Sam. If your mommy hates you so, why do you want to go back? To be there when Daddy comes home. Mommy says he never will come home. But I know he will. And I want to be there when he does. Mr. Cartlight, supper is almost ready. You better go wash your dirty little face, little boy. You can't make me. No wash, no eat. We no feed dirty little boy here. I ain't hungry. You still got a dirty little face. Come, hop and wash you wife. I can wash my own face. <laughs> Get some of this deep before it's all gone. I ain't hungry. Well, I want you to sit down at the table anyway. I ain't tired. I ain't gonna sit nor eat as long as you keep me here. Hmm. Suit yourself. I think I will sit, but not at the table. Sure is good. Yeah, boy, these are the best dumplings I believe I ever tasted. They're delicious. I'll starve myself skinny. Hey, boy, any more peas? No, I'm summoning Sam's plate thing. Oh. Good. Hey, wait! That was given to me. Never. You said you didn't want to eat it. Just for that, I will. Take care of her. Yeah. Hey, no chance you get married tomorrow, is there, Pa? Oh. You know, I don't think one woman could take care of her. That kid is absolutely it. I N K O R R I O R. I know what you mean, but I can't spell it. No, neither can either. I know what you're doing. You're trying to figure out a way how to keep me here. Sam, what we're trying to do is... I don't want to stay here. So all you have to do is put me on stage to San Francisco. All right, Sammy. It's a time for bed. What's that for? This is your nightgown. It's the best half thing can do. I don't need a nightgown. 
I sleep raw. Law? You know sleep law at this house? I you... do. Hey! Responsibility and everything in it. I won't wear it. I won't. I won't. I won't. Mr. Carly, the finally box out. You be good girl and we be friends. Yeah? Yeah, you sure she's related to us? Yes, yes, she, she is. I remember William Cartwright. I had a daughter, Martha, and he was my first cousin, so that would make that little girl up there your fourth cousin. Paul, can't you do what she wants done? Can't you put her on stage and send her back to San Francisco? So she can run around the streets of San Francisco again? And what are we going to do? You ride into Virginia City tomorrow and wire our agent in San Francisco to find Martha Dorcas and give her enough money to get here, and after that, we'll see what develops. That little girl's only real big problem is she's just spoiled rotten. What she needs is a good spanking. Mm -hmm. Little girl has a... has a good-sized problem. I don't know what a spanking would do. Well, you always seem to think they solved my problems. <laughs> Now that little gal been uprooted, sent off to strangers in a strange place, feels all alone in the world, unloved, unwanted. She's fighting back the only way she knows how, I guess. What she needs is not a spanking, but a little human understanding and compassion. old Indian doing outside my window. Get anywhere with her, we gotta convince her that she is a girl, so get rid of them, burn them.
give them back, I'm gonna get real mad. Loco or something? You better give me back my clothes. Stop hiding. Come on out. And if you don't come out, I'm gonna start breaking things and punching holes in the floor. Ay, 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 ay. Me come on, chale. Wait, 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 wait. Good morning, little girl. It's so good to see you again. You sleep good? You feel better? I didn't sleep good and I don't feel better. Your breakfast is ready. I ain't hungry. Today you're going to be nice little girl. You and I are going to be friends. Come, sit down. I ain't going to be nice and I ain't going to be your friend. So there. Oh, yeah. I want my clothes back. Well, they all go into town. They come back with new clothes, more better for little girl. I ain't... Oh, I know you, little boy. I know, little boy. Sit down, eat your breakfast. You can't make me eat. I'm going upstairs, and I'm going to stay in my bedroom until I get my clothes back. It's all right. You suit yourself. When you're hungry, you call me. I'll start myself blue. <laughs> Still in the bedroom? He plenty mad. Go away! Go away. Good morning, Sam. Got something for you here? Couple things? I ain't interested. Huh? Are you, uh, are you interested in this? What's that stuff for? This stuff, young lady, is for you to wear from now on. I ain't a young lady, and I ain't gonna wear that junk. You give me back my own clothes. Well, I'm afraid I just can't do that. You see, your clothes have been burned. You had no right to. Well, maybe I didn't have any right to, but I guess there's not much choice about what you're going to wear from now on. I'd rather run around raw. Just as you please. Oh, uh, you can come down any time you like. Raw, if you wish. Just for that, I will. I knew a little fella who looked like that, but this is a girl. Yeah, and a mighty good-looking little girl, too, huh? Don't you laugh at me. And I ain't neither a girl. I'm a boy. And I hate you. No, and I, I hate everybody. Oh, no, you don't. Hold it, little lady. Well, I guess the time has come for that paddling. Yeah, well, like you said, boy, a little human understanding and compassion. Come on, young lady. All right. It didn't hurt much, and you didn't make me cry. It took two of you great big men to beat up on one poor little girl. <laughs> oh. 
Sometimes, you know, you... spanking gives a child a sense of security. It shows them that you're concerned about them, that you like them. I sure hope I didn't hit it too hard. Oh, you didn't hit her hard enough to raise her dust. Ground's lame. Left front foot. He's got a stone. Hey, Will, you got a knife? Not just here, that's it. Be right with you. Well, 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 what have we here? She's been helping Hobsing in the kitchen. Has she? He's made me assistant chief cook and bottle washer <laughs> for the Ponderosa. <laughs> But remember, Hopsing is still boss, Sammy. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. All right, fellas, you hungry? Mr. Cartwright, I brought you some hot coffee. Well, thank you very much, Samantha. Thank you, appreciate that. I told Hop Singh I was going to behave myself while I was here. Well, I'm sure happy to hear that. But it ain't because you spanked me. I'm still going back to San Francisco and wait for my father. Well, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll try to help you arrange that. You spanked me awful hard, Mr. Cartwright. I'll probably be walking sideways for a week. I'm real sorry, Samantha. When other kids on our block got spanked, they didn't mind too much. Afterwards. Well, maybe that's because they knew that their fathers who spanked them loved them. My father never spanked me, and I know he did love me. I'm sure he did. Why did you spank me, Mr. Cartwright? Well... Was it because? Of course it was. Hey, Sam. Hey, that's a mighty pretty dress you got there. You like it? Sure do. Yeah, I'm sure glad you're not a little boy anymore. Don't you like little boys? Ah, we ain't got time for them little boys. But we like them little girls. Really? Yeah, big ones, too. Matter of fact, we might marry one someday. You are? When? Oh, I don't know when time's right. Well, we, we might wait for you to grow up, Sam, huh? I've been growing awful fast since I came here. I've noticed that. Hop Singh says I'm his best assistant, chief cook, and bottle washer he ever had. And he's gonna learn me how to make biscuits. Yeah, I'll bet you make them real good, too. I better get in town and see if there's any information. Here, you better load this. Yeah. Hey! Mm. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Don't stand too close to this. You want me to go away? Mm -mm. Just don't stand too close. This is dangerous. I don't like you. I don't like you either. I like Haas. When I grow up, I'm gonna marry him. You are, huh? Little joke, too. Both of them, huh? But I ain't gonna marry you, though. That's a deal. Don't you like me? I don't know, maybe because you don't like me. That's why I don't like you, because you don't like me. Well, that's kind of a Mexican standoff, ain't it? I think that maybe I do like you. Kinda. I think I, uh, I like you too. Kinda. Shake. Sh shake.
that's the Indian that was outside my window. Just don't you go wandering off by yourself. You understand? Hey, wait for me. Yeah, come on. I'm Martha Dorcas. Oh, Sammy Mama. Yeah. Mr. Cartwright, he out in the back. I go tell him you here. You come in, please. Thank you. Is my daughter all right? Oh, she just fine. She out riding in the wagon with the boy. Come in, please. Come in. You're a Cartwright. And of course, you're welcome here, and welcome to anything you might need. I appreciate that. But being a Cartwright makes you part of the family. And so, there's certain questions I'd like you to answer. Your daughter, you put her on a stagecoach, sent her off to some strange part of the country. Her not knowing whether you really loved her, now don't you think that was rather cruel? I didn't have a choice. I didn't want to hang around where I worked. She kept running away from the woman I had caring for her. Yes, she, uh, she told me about the place where you worked. She said the, uh, the men there liked her very much. Look, I know what you're thinking. No. I don't think you do know what I'm thinking. Well, then, I apologize. Look, I worked in a saloon. I waited tables and I sang. That's all I did. Mm -hmm. Why didn't you come to me sooner? I'm a Cartwright, too. Would you go to someone you didn't even know for help? What about your husband? Well? Tell me about him. He was sick drunk when I met him. He gambled away his money. He had no place to go. I took him in, I cared for him, and I loved him. Maybe it was gratitude on his part, I don't know. But anyway, he said he loved me, and he married me. And then he told me he had a wonderful surprise for me. He told me that his father was rich, had a big ranch across the bay from San Francisco. We were going to live there. He was going to straighten out, no more drinking, no more gambling. And he meant it. But by the time we got to the ranch, Calvin Dorcas had heard about me. He thought I was... Well, you know what he thought. He met us at the front door. He didn't even ask us in. No man in the saloon where I worked ever talked to me the way he did or looked at me the way he did. Your husband. How did he react to that? Will stood up for me that time. He said he didn't need Calvin Dorcas or his money. He was going to stand up on his own two feet and be his own man. And he tried for a while. He failed. He fell back into his old ways until I got pregnant. Then he tried again. And failed again. You know what? He wanted a son. He knew that his daddy wanted a grandson. And then Samantha came along and he began drinking again. Where is he now? I don't know. How you doing, Bob? Joseph? Uh, this is Samantha's mother. Mrs. Dorcas, my son, Joseph. Pleasure to meet you. There was a man of Virginia City asking about you, a fellow named Calvin Dorcas. Uncle Joe took me for a buggy ride way up in the mountains. Of course, I'd like to ride you, too, Uncle Oscar. Yeah. Come on, I'm better horse broke than Come on. <laughs> Come on.
come back. Oh, Mommy. You aren't going to take me away, are you? I like it here. And they like me. And they're the only friends I got. I won't go. I won't, I won't, I won't. And you can't make me. I'm going to stay here and be assistant chief cook and bottle washer. Samantha, come over here. We're going to have a little talk. Please, Mommy, don't make me go. never coming back, is he? I don't think so. Go to your room. Why? Don't ask, just go to your room. Thought you'd get away with it, did you? So that's Samantha. She don't look like a Dorcas. Mr. Dorcas, things have changed. Ain't got time to talk now. Come on, you. Who is this nasty old man? I'm your grandfather, Calvin Dorcas. And you're a Dorcas, too, and you're coming with me, young lady, whether you like it or not. I ain't a Dorcas. I'm a Cartwright. We'll soon fix that. Come on. Let come on. Hey, come back here, you. I said come back here. Get out of my way. Sir? Wait a minute. Please, just, just a moment. Who are you? Who are you? I'm Ben Cartwright. I own this house now. What are you doing here? I'm Calvin Dorcas, and I've come here to get my granddaughter. I got a court order giving her into my custody. And don't you dare try to tell me it ain't legal. I had it confirmed here in Virginia City by Judge Davis. Mr. Dorcas, I want to say something to you. Things have changed. I'm going to try and open a little dress shop here. Oh, you've changed your line of work, huh? Well, that's a joke. I know you better. You're a saloon girl. Consorting with every manner oh, of no, duck and Wait bump. a minute, wait a minute. That's enough of that. Kind of talk. You can talk yourself blue in the face, Cartwright, but I still ain't gonna leave my granddaughter with that woman. What have I ever done to you? You took my son from me. The only thing I had left to live for. You dragged him down into the gutter with you. He tried to come home. You're the one who shut the door in his face. Because he had you with him, with the smell of the Saloon on you and the mark of who knows how many men on you. Mr. Dorcas, I warned you by using that kind of talk. Now, will you stop it and take your hat off when you're talking to a woman? Now, you shut up and listen to me. Me? Yes. Shut up. You yes. shut up. Yes, yes, you listen to me. Now, Martha didn't drag your son into the gutter. The gutter is where she found him. Your son, from everything I hear about him, oh, is a spineless creature. Oh. I dare because I know it's the truth. He didn't have the guts to accept responsibility, so he ran away. Now, why he didn't have the guts, I don't know. Maybe that's the way he was born, although I doubt it. But I'm just a little tired of hearing you tell the mother of his child that she's responsible for everything that happened to him. Mr. Cartwright! Sammy Corn! She ran away! She went up to her room. No, she go down back stairs. I see her running into the wood. Wait a minute. You stay here. And don't worry. We'll find her. All right, let's spread out, huh? Boss, go up over the hill. And little Joe, you go up in that direction. All right, Boss. Candy? Yeah. You go up there, I'll take this way. All right. Sign. Try the flats.
You take that side, I'll hit. She's safe. Oh, she's fine. She's fine. What happened to you? Oh, I'm all right. I just, I just fell in the river. It was dark out. Yeah. I searched and I searched and I, I couldn't find her anywhere. You take some of this now. Oh, yeah. <coughs> Let's get him upstairs. It's all wet. Get him out of these clothes. You, you sure she's all right? Huh? She's fine. Come on. Sound asleep. He's a very sick man. Maybe he get chest sickness. Oh? He get very wet, very cold. Pretty silly running around like that at his age. Little girl is worth running around for. She is a granddaughter. The first time he's ever acted like it. Man change. Everybody change. I suppose so. Man try so hard for granddaughter. It's not all bad. Samantha? 
I know where I am, but what day is it? Tuesday. You've been awfully sick for three days. You don't have to tell me. I, I know I've been sick. Still don't feel good, huh? I can hear the, the flutter of black wings. I think I'm going to die. No, you aren't. Don't you argue with me. I ought to know. Anyway, what do you care if I do die? You called me a nasty old man now, didn't you? That's what you were. Oh, you think so, eh? Well, a fine granddaughter you turned out to be. Fine grandfather you are. Well, I wouldn't be lying here now on my deathbed if you hadn't run off now, would I? Well, I wouldn't have run off if you hadn't have come here to take me away. I was only going to do it for your own good. What else you got against me? You said very mean things to my mother. Well, I suppose I did. Well, you're awake, are you? I feel it. <gasps> Everybody wants to know how I feel, and nobody gives a hoot. That's right. Here. <clears throat> You've been doctoring me all along. Why? Why didn't you let me be good and sick and maybe even die when you had the chance? I didn't have much to do with whether you lived or died. I ain't been asleep all the time. I heard the Chinaman saying if it hadn't been for what you'd done for me, I'd have been mighty sick. I'd have done the same for anyone. But don't think you softened me up. I ain't changed my mind about taking Samantha with me, not one little bit. I didn't think you had. But I ain't going with you. Maybe Cartwright's right about my son. I guess nobody's to blame for the way he turned out, except, except maybe me. But if he was to come home, well, I mean, you don't want him to find his daughter running around a wild like a red engine now, do you? No. No, I don't. Good. Then I'll keep her at my home. See that she's raised right. Now, that's what I wanted to hear. If you'll keep her in your home, I won't argue with you. You can take her with you. But, Mommy... It'll be best for you. Now, you two, talk it over and make your plans. Samantha? Oh, no, you don't. <laughs> Mommy? Not now, baby. Listen, Mommy. Don't cry. Please don't cry. Please don't cry. Wait. I'll be right back. Now, wait a minute. It's... You made my father run away. You made my mother cry. You make everybody you know miserable. You're a bad man. All right. But a man can change, can he? I don't believe you can. Oh, you don't, eh? Well, I'll show you. Go get your mother. Go on, get her. Will, uh, will you come, too? Come and stay with us until we get this child settled? Grandpa? Will you come and stay with us for a year or two? Grandpa? Will you stay with us forever to be my daughter and my granddaughter? Sam, where's Mom? She's upstairs talking to Grandpa. Huh. Mommy and me are going to live with him. 
up in San Francisco. Well, now, isn't that wonderful? I'm going to be assistant chief cook and bottle washer on Grandpa's ranch. <laughs> oh, Uncle Ben. Oh, come on now. What's the matter, baby, huh? Hey, Sam, what's the matter? Yeah. I thought you'd be all happy about that. I am. I'm happy, sad. Grandpa's ranch is a long, long ways off, and I won't see you. I won't see any of you ever again. Hey, I come up to San Francisco all the time. Yeah, we'll stop in and see you when we're up there. Sure, and then you'll come and visit with us, won't you? Gee, it'll be like having two homes, won't it? Yeah, that's right. Just like having two homes, Sam. And don't forget, Hoss, you either, little Joe, about when I grow up. Oh, no. Mm -mm, no, we won't forget. What's, uh, what's this about when you uh, grow up? No, oh, that's just a little arrangement between Sam and Hoss and myself. Candy, too. I you forgot about me. Candy, too? Well, she proposed. I didn't. Oh. We sort of, uh, worked things out. <laughs> we worked things out. Well, hmm. <laughs> I really want to thank you for everything, Cousin Ben. Well, I'm so glad we had a chance to meet after all these years. You keep in touch. Well, I will. I ain't never been talked to like you talked to me, Cartwright. But I ain't gonna hold it against you. <laughs> Samantha, come on now. Dear. <laughs> Sam, I guess this is goodbye, Smee. You take care. Bye, Sam. Yeah. Okay. Hop sing, don't forget about when I grew up. Hop sing, no forget. What, you too? <laughs> Who teach her how to make biscuit? <laughs> 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 well, Sam, this is goodbye. Goodbye, Uncle Ben. Oh, Sam. <laughs> goodbye, Uncle Ben. Oh, Sam. <laughs> <laughs> you be a good girl now. Take care of yourself. Sam. All right. Come on, Sam. Are we getting the right? Hey! Hey, wait, 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 wait. Friend, friend. We want to thank you for, for, uh, for bringing back Sam. Yeah. Yeah, we sure do. Sam, my friend. Wait, well, you have many more friends here now. What's your name? My name... I need an it's in your bun. What? What? Yeah, hey, what? It mean see more. Huh. Well, see more. So come on in the house and have some lunch. Come on. Yeah. Come on. <laughs>